Hey there, Dave here. Inside this box is the first ever limited edition solid gold Robinhood credit card. They just announced this thing less than an hour ago and somehow I already have it. I feel like the MKBHD of credit cards. It is made of 36 grams of actual gold. It's not gold plated, it is solid gold. It's nearly a third heavier than the heaviest card that I've ever held, the JP Morgan Reserve card. But before I open this and tell you exactly how you can also get one for free, I'm going to open this. This is the non-limited edition of the new Robinhood gold card. It's also metal. It's a little easier to get your hands on. This is the teaser of what the card looks like in the Robinhood app. The waitlist just opened in the app and also at Robinhood.com slash credit card. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this while I give you the too long didn't watch summary of everything you need to know about it. The big news here is that it pays 3% cash back on everything. No categories, no caps, no limits. I'll get into why I think that's such a big deal in a minute. There's no annual fee with a caveat, more on that in a minute too. The outside is kind of shiny and matte at the same time. You wanna see it, don't you? It also has 5% cash back on travel booked through their new travel portal. There's no foreign transaction fee. All right, let's just do it. As always, I'm a sucker for packaging. Robin Hood embossed in foil, the card cradled in its own little cardboard sleeve. These guys are so good at packaging for a free credit card. Okay, now let's take it out of its slot here. Scan to activate card with the uh, QR code there. The card itself is gold in color, but it's actually made of 17 grams of stainless steel. It is a Visa signature card for those of you into that sort of thing. They already put my name on it, that's nice. There are no numbers on the card for added security. Let's take a quick peek at this compared to my Amex gold card, because I'd say that's been the gold standard for gold cards. I like the color, I like the simplicity. This is a very cool card. I'll be doing my often imitated but never duplicated drop test in this video coming up, but I know why you're really here. Let's open the solid gold credit card. Then we need to set the scene here with some dramatic music, a quick reminder to uh, smash the like button, some atmosphere, won't stop. Maybe a little too much atmosphere. Can you even see? That was not well thought through. <laughs> okay, I can't even see the uh, camera. We're gonna pause and open a window. One hour later. All right, you wanna try that again? A little atmosphere. Okay, let's do this. Even the inside of the box is printed with a nice matte black. Oh, wow. Is there too much atmosphere again? Maybe I should have rehearsed this. I didn't really think it through. Let's just move on. So inset within the box is another box. Even this box is far nicer than it has to be. And now for this box, because in here is the actual card. And I'm seeing on the back, it says all Louis Vuitton marks are property of Louis Vuitton. Is there, is there something in here from Louis? I imagine there is. Let's pull the tab. Oh, wow. <laughs> a cloth Louis Vuitton envelope, and we're gonna pull out a Louis Vuitton wallet. This is very high end, and just looking at it from the side, I can see that this card is, uh, is dramatically thick. Let's pull the card out. Should I be wearing gloves? Let's pull this card out. Oh, wow. The first thing I notice is that this is Definitely heavier than most credit cards. I mean, it should be, it's 36 grams of gold. That's a full Troy ounce of gold for those of you who were wondering. It is 10 karat gold, which is 41.7% pure gold. I know they tested higher carats and it was just too soft and scratched too easily. And I think it would probably literally bend in your wallet. This is solid, this is not gonna bend. I'm gonna compare this just from a color standpoint. Three very different shades of gold. They have AU79 uh, stamped in the corner. AU, if you remember your periodic table, that is gold, and 79, I think, is the atomic weight. The back of this card, again, has my name embossed in it, or printed on, I can't really tell, because it looks a little different than the Visa Infinite logo. Robinhood told me that all in, the manufacturing process takes weeks and multiple vendors, and that each card is made of more than $1,000 worth of gold. This would be a good time for me to mention that Robinhood is not paying for this video. They did not tell me what to say. They don't get to see this video in advance, but full transparency for the FTC, if you're watching, they did send me a chunk of gold in the mail. 
Whoa. So the only parts of this card that are not solid gold are the chip and the magnetic stripe. And they coded the card to help prevent fingerprints and scratches. No fingerprints at all showing up. I really like this texture. It's kind of a brushed metal look. I think the thing that my channel is most known for is dropping credit cards. So we've got to compare these to the other cards that I've dropped before. This is the solid, solid gold Robin Hood gold card. This is the regular Robin Hood gold card. Here are the contenders today, sorted from lightest to heaviest. We're gonna start with this Centurion card, which is 14 grams of anodized titanium. Next, the Apple card, which is 15 grams of titanium, which I actually weighed in at 14.8 grams. Such different titanium sounds. The Apple card's signature twang. Next up, Amex Gold, 15 grams of precision cut and engraved stainless steel. Kind of unimpressive. The Amex Platinum card, 17 grams of stainless steel. The X1 card, which is also 17 grams of stainless steel. The Robin Hood Gold card, also 17 grams of stainless steel, but gold in color. And finally, the Robin Hood Solid Gold card, which is 36 grams of solid gold, and obviously way heavier. Now, how does that clang compared to the Titanium Apple card? Because I, I think they are a little bit similar. The Apple card is way too clangy, kind of high-pitched clangy. And the Gold card has a little bit lower resonance. Oh, I, I think that's got to be the winner. Okay, so the regular Robin Hood Gold card sounds very similar to the other stainless steel cards. And when it comes to the metal clang, Apple or Robin Hood Solid Gold. Let me know which one you think sounds best down in the comments, but let's talk for a minute about why I think 3% cash back is such a big deal. Because for all my team cashback friends, you already know that 2% is the default standard for non-category spend, that everything else category. If you're not getting at least 2% cash back on everything you buy, you're just not doing it right. There are a handful of cards that have 2% cash back on everything, like the City Double Cash card. There's one from Fidelity, a, a few others. But every single card that has ever promoted more than 2% has some kind of a limit or cap or spending category or points transfer or annual fee or something that makes their advertised 5x points not really 5% cash back on everything. This is 5.25% back on your selected category, but only for the first $2,500 per quarter and only if you have at least $100,000 at Bank of America in the Preferred Rewards Program. Otherwise, it's only 1% back. This advertises 5%, but it's really only 5% on the first $300 you spend in one of their qualifying categories each month. Everything else only gets 1%. 5.5% on travel, 4.4% on dining, but this is a $695 annual fee. This is $250 annual fee. These cards really only make sense if you get value out of the assortment of credits that they give you for stuff like Uber and Peacock and Walmart Plus and Fine Hotel and a hodgepodge of other credits. This has 3% back on everything, but only after you spend $1,000 for the month. It's 2% before that, and they cap the 3% at the next $6,500. Best case, if you spend exactly $7,500 in a month, you'll get 2.86% back. If you didn't know, the X1 card was actually acquired by Robinhood this last summer, and they stopped taking applications for the X1 card and put up this coming soon message. I was very curious what the X1 team was gonna do in the credit card space under the Robinhood brand. I figured it was gonna be something big, the same way Robinhood disrupted stock trading with free trades before anyone else. So we'll see if history repeats and maybe, just maybe, earning 3% back on everything will become the new 2%, but I doubt it. In reality, unless you actually love playing the credit card points game and are actually pretty good at it, it's quite likely that a simple, predictable 3% cash back will beat whatever you're getting from your cards now. So how do you get this card? There is a wait list. It just opened up today. Robinhood loves using a wait list to roll out new features. The X1 card also loved a wait list. They had 200,000 people on their wait list in just the first seven days. Once you're off the wait list, the application process is super simple. It's built right into the Robinhood app. So if you're a Robinhood customer, they already have all of your info. The whole process for me took less than five minutes. They do a soft credit pull first to let you know how much credit you'll be approved for. And if you're ready to formally apply, they then do the hard pull. While you're waiting for the metal card to be sent to you, you can instantly get your card number in the app and add that to your phone's wallet. You do that in their credit card app, which is a brand new app separate from the main app. If you've used the X1 app, this is going to look very familiar to you. You can check your points. You can create virtual cards. The Robinhood Gold card doesn't technically have an annual fee, but it's only available for people who subscribe 
subscribe to Robinhood Gold, which is their upgraded service that gives you things like lower margin rates and more interest on your cash and a match when you contribute to an IRA and more stock market data and some other features. And as of today, access to their new credit card or at least the new credit cards wait list. So if you have Robinhood Gold anyway, you can get the card with no extra fee. And if not, and you're subscribing to the Gold program just to get the card, you can think of it as an annual fee, kind of like the Amazon Prime card and paying for an Amazon Prime subscription. Bottom line, how does the Robinhood card fit into my personal credit card strategy? Because I'm always rethinking my strategy and simplifying where I can. And for me, this will immediately replace any card that has 2% back, like the City Double Cash card, which I haven't used in a while. And even my Bank of America premium card, which is 2.625 back with a $95 annual fee and requiring $100,000 of Bank of America and preferred status. Goodbye. This will eventually replace my X1 card. I still have four times points on everything grandfathered in for a while, but when this drops back down to two times points, I'm going to use the Robinhood gold card for the everything else category. As for my other cards, I thought I was still getting enough value out of my Amex cards to justify the fees, but what's insane is I finally did the math for this video. Last year, I spent $35,422 between airfare and dining on these two cards. The difference between me getting 3% on the Robinhood gold card and getting 5.5% for airfare would have only been $245 and 4.4% for dining would have been $282. That's before annual fees, just the actual cashback difference between 3% and 4.4% and 5.5%. Factoring in Platinum's $695 annual fee and $250 on the gold card for the privilege of having these two cards and then deducting all of the random credits, but importantly, only for the stuff that I would actually pay for anyway, these two cards would have ended up earning me an extra $66.87 for the full year, seriously. That is 0.18% more on more than $35,000 that I spent on airfare and dining last year. For most people, including apparently me, if you wanna keep things as simple as possible, this 3% card could be a great only card. And if you do wanna complicate things a little, I'd say figure out which category you spend the most on and then find a card with more than 3% in that category and then calculate the fee or whatever other limit they have and then see if it still makes sense. And then use this card for everything else. Oh, and if you buy stuff on Amazon at all and you're paying for Amazon anyway, you should always use the Amazon Prime card for 5% back. Lots of things to factor in, but it really just comes down to how and how much you spend. So do the math and tell me how that works out for you in the comments. So if you wanna get the Robinhood Gold Card, I'm gonna have a link in the description. It's not a referral link. You can just go to robinhood.com slash credit card. And as promised, if you wanna get the solid gold edition of the card for free, it's way easier than I thought it would be. All you have to do is refer 10 friends to the Robinhood Gold program. That's it. So after you put yourself on the wait list, you'll get an invite link that you can share with your friends. And then once 10 people sign up and pay for at least one month of gold, which is five bucks a month, Robinhood will send you your very own solid gold credit card. They say it's a limited quantity. There's going to be exactly 5,000 solid gold cards to be exact. And I have no idea how long they're going to last. But if you want this, Hopefully you have 10 friends or you make credit card videos on YouTube, but I already have mine, so no invite link for me. <laughs> I'm not saying there's an arbitrage opportunity here, but the way my brain works, the Robinhood gold card is only 50 bucks a year or $5 a month. So 10 friends for a month is 50 bucks. You could pay your friends $5 each to sign up. And if you're one of the first 5,000 people to figure that out, you'll get this, which at today's spot gold price is worth more than a thousand bucks. Just saying. Anyway, that is the latest from here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you back there for the next Hey There Dave here.